Hey, Michael D'Amico here. Forgive the low production quality of this video, but who cares? I'm gonna teach you today a little bit about what Z-Gel is, how to use it, and why to use it. This is a really cool way to embellish a G Clay print and make it kind of a one of a kind. Um, personally, I think it's even a little more preferable than going the limited edition route. So let's first discuss what the heck Z-Gel even is. Z-Gel is specifically used as a clear texturizing coating that goes on after a print is made. And you'll see here today, this is one of my G-Clays, one of my paintings. And I'm going to actually use the, oh, the gloss version of this to embellish the print. Now, let me dive a little deeper into this. What I mean is, this stuff goes on here and dries clear, leaving behind texture. All right, now, this stuff takes a little bit of getting used to, don't be afraid of it. I'd say um, five minutes on a blank piece of canvas or paper and you'll be a pro just like me. Now, I do wanna discuss a couple of things that I've learned over the years of this. That I find very handy to know. Find a couple of, uh, let's say, some of your more distressed brushes in your brush collection. You do not have to use a high quality brush here. In fact, personally, I feel the effects are a little more exaggerated once this stuff dries. If you use your old gnarly brushes, it leaves behind some nice texture, some nice impasto, and uh, some good, um, uh, good visual cues that kind of tell that it has been texturized. Now, I would like to elaborate on one other thing. Uh, what I mean also by that is your viewer, when someone's looking at this after you've done this effect, what they're immediately gonna think is, oh wow, it's an original. I would like to make the disclaimer, you should still represent these as what they are. Um, some good language to use is artist embellished G clay print or reproduction. Those kinds of vocabulary are not misleading. So my preference is, you know, I'm right-handed, so I start in the top left and I work my way down to the bottom right so that my hand's not dragging through. If you're a lefty or a southpaw, just do the opposite. Uh, quite frankly, there is no real like law or rule to this. That's just my preferred method. Uh, second step, I like to kind of cover an area and then come back and do more detailed kind of touch-up work or detailed impasto texturizing things like that. Side note, it's totally cool to use a palette knife on these guys too. The only thing is you just want to make sure don't get too, too, too thick with this. What's too thick? Um, let's say, let's not get more than about, what, an eighth of an inch there? Thickness? Well, you can run the risk in certain conditions of it staying milky. All right? See, this stuff starts almost looking like white paint. It goes on kind of milky, almost like a paste. You'll see in a second, but, um, Nevertheless, it does dry clear, I promise. Maybe the first time you ever do this, you might freak out and think, oh no, I've completely ruined it, but just let it sit, you know, solid overnight, it'll uh, cure out. All right, so I'm gonna use a little bit wider of a brush to begin with, kind of a nice stiff bristle acrylic uh, brush. Again, nothing fancy. I'm just going to kind of do a little area here, get a good cover. All right. I'm gonna keep moving. I'm actually kind of happy with that particular texture. See, I'm kind of overlapping his hat here as I'm making my texture. And it'll make sense why in a second. All right, once I brush it on out like that, now I can come back with, say, a more detailed brush. Get it into the Z jet a little bit. And then look, kind of cut in follow that exact line that was actually originally painted when I started this piece. Kind of make some passes or patterns that actually follow the, the contour of the shape. And it looks again a little exaggerated, but fret not, I promise you when this dries, it ends up looking so cool. All right, so I finished coating this piece and yeah, it looks kind of milky. No worries, promise you this stuff does dry clear. Don't panic. Uh, a couple of things that you do want to keep in mind though, all right, listen, you want to work quickly. 
So I told you to start up here and kind of work your way down here loosely. You know, I, I went up here and back here and around here. I, mean, I broke that rule a little bit, but for the most part, I went that way so I don't drag my hand through my progress. But again, you do want to work quickly. If you get, say, down here and you start backtracking, you run the risk of this stuff starting to set up and you can get some haziness to appear. You don't want that, especially if it ends up accidentally becoming permanent. So the way to avoid that, it's very simple, just keep making your progress. Do the best you can to get all the way through and then get down here and I'm sure you're gonna look back and be like, oh no, I missed a spot here, I missed a spot there. No worries, just let it cure on out. Let this first coat cure. Um, you can add as many sequential coats after as you want. You could build this stuff a mile high if you wanted to, but just let each of these little layers cure out, okay? Um, clean up with soap and water. If you're in a pinch, uh, you can set these out in the sun, cure them pretty quick, and sometimes less than an hour, or also um, heat gun. Uh, be very careful with the heat gun. I have boiled these pretty quick, and once you go down that path, there's just no coming back. Uh, just move slowly and keep the heat gun, you know, a good eight, ten inches away from the surface. Work in circles, you know, don't stay in one spot for too long. All right, this one is cured. And as you can see, it's got a nice sheen to it. <clears throat> now, the original here in this case didn't have a ton of texture to begin with. So, in my finished product, you know, kind of went with emulation of the original. But you can see now I've got a good sheen. We've got some brush strokes that sort of follow the pattern of the image, a uh, nice soft background, and nothing too extreme. Everything dried nice and clean and clear. I'm kind of holding it at an angle so you get the good reflection across there, but we've got no haziness, nothing milky, where we left off just a little bit ago in this video. I do sell this through my online store. I've got a 32 ounce and a gallon container. For you guys that are out there doing some serious volume, maybe selling some stuff on Etsy or selling online, try the 32 ounce first, see how long it lasts you. It does keep really well. So, it, I mean, I've got one um, that I've had on the shelf over a year now. I'm a bigger fan of the semi-gloss than I am the gloss. That's just personal preference. One doesn't perform better than the other. They are exactly the same on performance. I just like a little lower sheen. Personally, that's my preference. Click the link below in the video. It'll take you to our shopping cart. You can buy it right there online. Uh, we'll get it out as quick as possible to you, usually in, say, five to ten business days total, all right?